It is a beautiful day here in the mountains of Southern Appalachia, but it's rainy. It's really rainy. It's quit right now, but it's been raining on and off for, I guess, the last 24 hours. Rained all day yesterday. So this time of the year when it rains, it's amazing how you'll think spring's coming along and you see a little green here and a little green there. Then you have a good rain and then you come outside and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I can see the all the leaves on the trees beginning to unfurl all the different colors. I always think it's fascinating how trees at the beginning of the year, when they're first putting out their leaves, they're different colored, so then they turn green. And then at the end of the year, when they're about to drop them all, they turn colors again. So that's always interesting to me. But especially if you've got something growing in your garden. I was standing up here on the porch just looking around, and I can't believe how good my lettuce and my kale look. I can see my long line of radishes. Before long, my carrots and my parsnips will be up that high. Right now, they're still just about like that. But they're growing. And it's just amazing to see all the growth that appears after a rain. I really wish I could be out working. Uh, we desperately need to plant our cabbages. Hadn't got that done yet, but I can't with it being so wet and rain. This is just a break in the rain. It'll be back soon. I am gonna take a quick look around the yard though and see what's growing. And then I'm gonna go in the greenhouse and see what things are doing in there, see how everything's doing. Our tomatoes are continuing to come up. The peppers I bought are doing good. And the ones that are struggling that I planted, they're looking a little better. So hopefully they're gonna pull out and they're gonna be okay by the time it, warm weather gets here and it's time to plant peppers. And there's also two things I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, people keep asking about my name, Tipper, that was one of them, and also about the name of my blog, Blind Pig and the Acorn. As I start my walk around the yard, you can see how, how muddy it is outside. We've had so much rain. I am still really loving though, the flower bed that I got cleaned out looks so much better. And again, that rain just makes all the green pop. Everything looks so nice. I see a few of the geraniums blooming now, little pink bloom that they have. Lent roses are still going strong. I see the first little onions coming up and the onions that I planted. I need to get more in the ground if it'll ever dry up. The daffodils are pretty much all finished blooming, but the next flower that I have that comes along blooming is the columbines. Aren't they pretty? Beautiful little plant and open the inside to see what they look like on the inside. Really pretty. We're still really loving the steps we had built last year, and I should have showed you my flowers before the rain. They kind of look tattered now, but the thrift that I planted here last year really has taken off, and it was just beautiful a couple of days ago. Maybe when the sun comes back out, it'll perk back up. You can see the rains wash some of the mulch off the drain pipe there. I have a couple of clumps of bloodroot in this bed too. One here and then one just above it. All of my flower beds desperately need to be weeded. Well, I've did that one and it looks so much better. This one really needs to. You can see the weeds and the some of my tulips that I planted here last year. I just planted them last year. They're just now coming up. I don't know if they'll bloom or not. And then you can see there's all kinds of poppies coming up. So Katie will be happy about that. She had some in this bed last year and I guess they've reseeded themselves. Have a couple of lilies coming up right here. I'd forgot that I even put them here last year. I can't really remember what they were. Maybe they'll be like the orange tiger lilies. I think they'll do good in this bed. It's probably why I put them here because this bed gets late evening sun and it just radiates off of the house and it gets so hot. It's hard to find things that'll do good in it that don't just dry up. The chamomile I put here, it looks like it's doing good. Now it's not got hot yet, so I don't know how it's gonna do when the hot sun hits it. But for now, it's at least living. 
The chamomile in the herb bed's doing good too that I put back in it. Also the lemon balm and the, that's just a weed. And then some, the hyssop is coming out really good. Now I want to move the hyssop to one of my round containers, but I'm not going to get that done if me and Matt don't actually figure out where to put it and fill it with dirt. This was the last raised bed that Matt got retrofitted for us. And then we've not been back out here working since then. We've been working on Austin and Corey's house. Matt has been. We need to put a layer of compost in here before we plant anything. But all those plants that are coming up that you can see that is jewel weed, jewel weed. It's a beautiful wildflower. I'll have to pull all those up though, because it gets to be a really, really big plant. And if I left them, I wouldn't be able to grow anything else in here. Another thing that rain really helped was our potatoes. I can't believe how much that one's grew. It's almost up to the top of the bag. So they're all looking good. That rain really, really helped them. Things are looking good in the greenhouse too. And some of our tomatoes are even beginning to get their new leaves, their true leaves there. Look at that. That's amazing. Overall, it looks like we've had good germination. There's a few that's not come up yet. There's one right there, but maybe they will. Actually, I see a little bit of green. That may be, may be about to sprout up. There's one that's not come up, but it may still. One, but overall, really good. And at least some of those others will come up. But it's exciting to see the new leaves. There, that one's got two in it. I must have put two seeds accidentally. So nice to walk around the yard and see all that wonderful new growth. Spring is a really exciting time. Mine and Matt's yard really needs mowing though. Uh, it needed mowing a week ago and all this rain's just gonna make it that much worse. The first time we mow and weed eat, weed eat will be a tough job for sure, but we'll just have to manage to do it. I think it was Tuesday this week, I thought me and Matt both were planning. We weren't paying attention to the weather obviously, but we were planning we were gonna get up early and we were gonna weed eat and mow and plant the cabbage and we woke up to rain. We should have been paying attention. I have a little buddy in here. Binks has found me. So the questions though that I wanted to answer today and talk about were my my name, Tipper. A lot of people ask me about that. Is that your real name? And how interesting your parents, you know, were so cool or whatever. It's not my real name. My real given name is Mary Jane. But when I was learning how to walk, so that's how long I've been Tipper. I was just learning how to walk mother had a this like a walker you know walkers are common but this one uh, looks kind of odd in the pictures of course that was you know a long time ago and they don't make them like they do today but anyway when i would be in it walking like you know granny would put me in it to pacify me or teach me to walk or whatever it was keep me in one place i'm sure they all tell the story of how I would go really fast. I could just whip around in it. I just got to where I could go real good in it. But I was always on the verge of turning it over. And my older brother, Steve, he's five years older than me. Uh, I have the best brothers in the world, Steve and Paul. Wonderful, both of them. But Steve's five years older than me. He would worry about it, you know, just like any big brother would. He would worry about me falling. But instead of falling, he was worrying that I would tip over. He kept saying, she's going to tip over. She's going to tip over. He was always worried I was going to tip over and that turned into tipper so from then on i was just tipper now i was always tipper at home with my family they called me tipper where i wasn't tipper was when i went to school i've shared in other videos i was really a backward child which is funny now that i have a youtube channel and talk all the time but i was backward uh, in appalachia that would mean that i was shy really reserved i was shy to the point if people talked to me when i was little i would try to hide behind perhaps britchy legs or granny's dress tail at church i didn't want nobody to talk to me or look at me or anything sometimes i would just stare back at them and not say anything i was really backward anyway i was much too backward at school to say uh could you call me Tipper, please? I, I, that's, that's really what I go by. I never said that. I was too shy. Of course, once I was an adult, I, you know, I, and my friends, even then, friends knew that I was Tipper and Mary Jane. It was confusing, you know. Uh, but once I was an adult, it was easy for me to say, hey, I'm, I'm Tipper. That's who I've always really been, and that's what I'd like for you to call me. I did have one other nickname growing up. Uh, I was older than the in my walker by this point. I was probably maybe three or four years old, something like that. And one day, Granny went to get her hair fixed, went to get her hair did, as we would say. And she come back, and I don't know, you know, I can't remember. I don't remember any of this. This is what they told me, especially Daddy would tell me this story in life about it. But 
I don't know if she had like a perm or if she had some color put on it or maybe had it frosted or something. I'm not sure what she had. But anyway, when she come home, she, of course, was talking about her hair and she asked me what I thought about it. And I kind of giggled and I said I thought it looked like a dog. And Daddy, Pap, he got on to me and said, that's not nice, Tipper. You shouldn't have said that. How would you like it if somebody told you you look like a dog? And I said, well, I'd like it a lot. And so he started calling me Doggy. So for a while, he called me Doggy, but that one never really took over Tipper. But every once in a while, he'd tell that story and laugh about it and uh, talk about calling me Doggy. It is funny, over the years, I've known lots of dogs named Tipper or Tippy or something like that, some form of variation of that. And the little boy, Alex, that I kept for so long till he went to school, he was just like a member of our family. At some point, he got a dog. Him and his sister got a dog. And it was like one of the mornings I went to pick him up, there was this dog. And I don't even remember now where they got it or how it come to be. But um, his mom was saying, telling me that they, they couldn't really figure out what to name it. And Alex and, I, I don't know if it was Alex and his sister or just Alex had come up with that they would either name it Barbecue or they would name it Tipper. And, uh, which was funny, you know, and I said, well, I, we were just sitting there talking. I said, well, if I was you, I'd name it Barbecue. I think that's a really good name. And little Alex popped up and said, its name is Tipper, because <laughs> he was going to do the opposite. So that was a dog, Tipper. Tipper lived for a long time. She even got to move to Brasstown eventually. Um, so that was a funny one. And over the years, people, if I remember, I worked with a lady that for a long time, and, uh, you know, they couldn't quite get Tipper. They might call me, people, various people would call me Tippy or something like that. I just answer to it. I don't care. But she called me Temper. She said Temper all the time. And I just, I just didn't ever correct her or say that, you know, it's Tipper or anything like that. Um, so very, sometimes it's hard for people to wrap their mind around Tipper. Nicknames are really interesting, though, when you start thinking about them. A lot of times they're used, uh, you know, something funny happens to somebody, or it's like me not, you know, I was going to tip over and that turned into tip or something like that. Something happens to someone. Sometimes they're used to clarify, like, you know, maybe you know more than one person. Um, I, I think of in my sister's sister-in-law's family and my brother's family, my family, there, there was two marks, so it made it easier to say little mark and big mark, uh, just to differentiate between which one you were talking about. The same thing down the road, um, neighbor, our neighbors, there's a son, Johnny, I mean a father, Johnny, and a son, John, and over the years, especially when he was little, they called him John John and Little John, Little John like and Big John, you know, to differentiate. And it's funny how those things stick in your mind. Um, you know, of course, today we're grown, me and him both, and but when I see him, it's so hard for me not to say, hey, hey, little John, or hey, John, John, even though he's a grown man now, you know. So sometimes nicknames are used like that to kind of differentiate who you're, who you're talking about. Now, Pap was somebody that really loved nicknames. He loved them, and he gave them to people a lot. And some of those people, their names stuck, like, like Tipper, you know, it stuck, and they, they continued to be called that, um, at least by their friends and maybe the ball team that Pap was coaching. Coaching. So he really loved to give those um, nicknames to people. The ones I can think of come to mind is like Rooster and Leadfoot and Cutie Pie and Bluebird and Pickle and Mud Turtle. He, he loved to give nicknames to people. And it's funny how some of them stick, you know, and then um, also how if you see one of those men, grown men today walking around uh, and call them by those names. They know, they're like, I can't exactly figure out who you are, but I know you come from way back and you come from somewhere around where Jerry Wilson was. Um, one of them, Mud Turtle, I run into him. This has been now five, six, gosh, time goes by, probably more like eight or nine years ago. He had lived off for a long time and then he moved back into this area and he come by the college one day for something. He was working with the school system and, and I said something to him, Mud Turtle, and he like looked at me real like he was trying to figure it out, you know, and then he said, who are you? And I told him and then he said, oh, I remember they called you Tipper. I said, yeah. So uh, sometimes it's really interesting. Those nicknames stick with you like mine has or they kind of fade away depending on the people that you're around. Corey and Katie have not really had nicknames that stuck, except for the one that stuck most on them is really funny. One of those weird ones that just come about is that Corey, sometimes we all call her Copy, Copy. And that didn't come about until they were in high school. And one of the very first cell phones they had, I was actually against them having cell phones, me and Matt were. At that time, I didn't even have a cell phone. I didn't have one, didn't want one, didn't want Corey and Katie to have one. And um, one time we were at 
Christmas at Matt's family at the Presley's, and they were, Corey and Katie was complaining about how they were the only kids that didn't have cell phones, you know. And Matt's cousin, Jennifer, informed them that they could go buy one, like a cheap one, at Walmart, and then they could just put, buy the little cards, like straight talk, buy the cards to put on it, and you could just text with it. You couldn't do anything else, you know. And so they saved their money up, and they got them a phone. You know, they did that all on their own. Well, when Corey, Katie would text to Corey, every, every time she used the word Corey, she tried to use it, her phone would like spell check it and turn it into Kopi, which is really strange because Kopi is not a word that I'm aware of. You can tell me if it is, and maybe I just don't know what it's used for, but it would change it to Kopi. So Katie started calling Corey Kopi, and somehow we all started calling her that. Even Granny and Pap started calling her that. You know, not all the time, but every once in a while they'd say something about Kopi, and so we always, like in a teasing way, but we all still use it today uh, at Christmas and things. Sometimes I'll put Kopi instead of Corey on her, her little present. And as far as Katie, when she was real little, sometimes we called her Katie Bug. Matt still calls her that. Matt calls Corey and Katie both. A lot of times he calls them sister. He'll say sister this or that. You need to do this or you need to do that. Um, which is, is like an old timey thing, I think, and I really like that. But Corey did have another nickname that she actually gave herself. She was probably maybe five years old, maybe six, but she was real young, maybe even four, but probably about five, I would say. And I don't know where she got this thought, but she just wanted us to start calling her Cotton Candy. And she was very adamant about it, so she wanted to be called Cotton Candy. And she would tell people at church, everywhere we went, she'd tell people that her name was not Corey, it was Cotton Candy. That's what she wanted to be called, was Cotton Candy and uh, people would laugh at her, but they'd indulge her. And about that same time, I guess maybe they were more like about four years old. You can tell the sunshine's coming out, I'm getting bright. Um, we'd went to a, like a camping trip and they both got sick and, and ended up actually in the hospital. It was like, later the doctor thought it wasn't really a, maybe so much a stomach virus as maybe salmonella poisoning or something like that. Anyway, but during that, Corey demanded that they call her Cotton Candy, and her doctor was nice. He wrote it on her chart that she wanted to be called Cotton Candy. And she eventually started, I guess she thought, well, I've got all these people to call me Cotton Candy. She started adding stuff to it, like it was like Cotton Candy, Sprite, Fruit Head. All, it just got silly, got totally silly. But she finally, she didn't, that didn't last long. She outgrew all that. But it is funny to think about her demanding that her name be Cotton Candy and demanding people call her that. Two other ones that just come to mind since I'm talking about nicknames is my nephew, Ben. He was the first grandchild in Pap and Granny's family. Uh, made me and Paula, you know, an uncle and an aunt, and Matt too, uh, for that matter, for the first time. And we were just all crazy about him, you know, just crazy. And he, he couldn't say Ben, and he called himself Bebo. So for a long time, we'd call him Bebo. And still, every once in a while, one of us will tease him about that. Pap especially would. He'd say, how you doing, Bebo? You know, even though he was grown and in college. And uh, thinking about these silly names like this, when Austin and Corey first met and were first dating and getting to know each other, somehow Corey and Katie being silly, just being totally silly with Austin, they start calling him Willard. And uh, so then they just got in the habit of that and they called him Willard. And he didn't, you know, it was all in good fun. He didn't think nothing about it. And then one time he was around his parents and they heard them calling him Willard and they're like, who is what? Who is Willard? What is going on? You know, and then they had to tell them what's this ongoing joke that we've had for the, for the past several months. What's up, Binks? Will you bring me my little screen that goes on the camera? I don't know where I've left it laying, if it's back there on my dresser or in the kitchen somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. And the other question that I've been getting recently was about the name of the blog, Blind Pig and the Acorn. So way back in 2007, when I first started thinking about having a blog, I wanted, of course, I thought it has to have a great name. You know, what kind of name? What would embody Appalachia, but also my family, but also the way I look at life? You know, all those things going through my mind, and I just couldn't really think of anything. You know, you think about um, just mountain life or something like that. And during that time, Miss Cindy, she was still in Black Mountain, and she had a friend named Larry, and he was just one of those people that kind of knew a little bit about everything, you know, and was always thinking and talking and doing. and. 
she said, well, and she was in on my, you know, she from the very beginning, she was like my biggest cheerleader, Miss Cindy was. So she knew every, every time I would meet with the college to talk about my blog or every time I would find out something, you know, she was regularly wanting to know about all of it. So when I was thinking about the name, she said, let me ask Larry. He just knows stuff like that. Do you care if I ask him? I said, no, I don't, I'm, I need help. I don't care a bit. So she did, and so over a couple of days, he wrote, he just, when he would think about something, he would just write down stuff. I've still got that sheet somewhere. I need to try to find it and see what other names are on there. But one of them was Blind Pig and the Acorn. Well, I really liked that because I, I like pigs, of course, and acorn. It sounded like earthy and, you know, but I thought, but what does it mean? What is that Blind Pig and the Acorn? What does that even mean? And so he told me, when I asked him, he said, what's well, an old saying? It means that even a blind hog or blind pig can find an acorn every once in a while. You'll hear that both ways, blind pig or blind hog. Anyway, but even a blind pig can find an acorn every once in a while. And I thought, well, I really like that. I like that because I don't even know if this will work, what I'm doing, this endeavor that I'm starting. You know, I need to be like the blind pig and maybe find an acorn. I love acorns and I just really like it. It just fits somehow. But before I decided on it, I thought, you know, when he told me that about the saying, I thought, well, that's interesting, but I've never heard that saying. And, of course, I asked Matt, and Matt's like, I've heard that all my life. And I was like, well, what do you know? I'm going to go ask my daddy, you know. So I went down to Pap and Granny's and asked Pap, and he said, no, Tip, I ain't never heard that. But he said, you know what? It's just like the other one, even a broke clock's right twice a day. And I said, well, yeah, I've heard that one um, anyway, but come back and told Matt that daddy hadn't heard it either and he said well it's very common and of course it is very common I learned after that anyway that's how I I thought well that just fits that's perfect I don't know if I can I can find the acorn but I'm going to try my best and I just love the whole sound of it so that's how the blind pig and the acorn got its name thanks to Mr. Larry he's no longer with us he died a, a few years before Miss Cindy did uh, maybe more like four or five years before she did but I always uh, thank him for the name and glad that he he took the time to write out all those names and suggestions and ended up that that one fit and all these years it's just really it's kind of i you know you you read it or hear it and you're like hmm wonder what that is so i think that's good and then i didn't know this is one of those things you find out later in the days when i first started blogging blogging was really big and People, lots of people had blog roles. That's not as familiar or as common of a thing these days. But in those days, it's really common to have a blog role and you'd have your favorite blogs somewhere on the blog. There'd be a list of favorite ones. Well, I would have never dreamed of that helping me there, but it did because it, most people would put those logs uh, in alphabetical order. Well, with Blind Pig, a B, I was always at the top. I wasn't never down. So you know, I'm not sure that that drove lots of traffic to my website, but it certainly, anybody that looked at that probably looked at it long enough to see Blind Pig and the Acorn, and, and either that would stick in their mind, or maybe they would think, hmm, Blind Pig and the Acorn sounds interesting, I'll go see what that is, and, and then they would um, click on that link and come to my blog so that they could, you know, see what, what it was all about, and maybe they would like it and stay, maybe they wouldn't, but maybe it would at least get them there, so that was something I never even uh, thought of until, you know, probably years later even maybe a year or two later then I realized that was really beneficial to be that high up on everybody's blog roll who was nice enough to link back to me and of course I probably had linked to them I hope you enjoyed hearing about my nickname and my that took over my real name and then the what the reason behind the blind pig and the acorn the name of it and also seeing what's wonderful growth we're having here in spring of the year in the mountains of Appalachia I'm always glad when you stop by to help me celebrate the wonderful, wonderful place of Appalachia.